King Richard III goes into battle wearing a crown, symbol of what's at stake that day. Richard declares, this day I will die as king or I will win. And even his enemies admit that he fights courageously. Richard gets within a sword's length of Henry Tudor, but the enemy forces overwhelm him. In desperation, he cries out, my horse, my horse, my kingdom for a horse. And then he's killed with a blow to the head and he loses his crown. After Henry's victory, Richard's crown is discovered in a hawthorn bush and Henry is crowned with it on the battlefield. Now, how much of this really happened? It's impossible to say. But the reason that this is the story we know is because it's the one Henry wanted us to remember. Henry wanted to make everyone aware of his decisive victory on the battlefield. But that was the easy part. In a nation divided, Henry's enemies still believed that he was a usurper who'd stolen the crown from the anointed King Richard III. Henry needed to legitimize his new reign. So when his first parliament met a few months after Bosworth, he made sure that it was his version of events that was recorded. One telling detail that Henry had written into the records of Parliament was that his reign had begun on the 21st of August, 1485. Now, this is a bit odd, because the Battle of Bosworth wasn't until the 22nd of August, 1485. Was this a slip of the quill? No, it was deliberate. Henry was claiming that he'd already been king, even before the battle. So he wasn't a usurper stealing the crown. He was just taking what was rightfully his. He cunningly realized that his success didn't just lie in victory on the battlefield. It also lay in the way that the history of the Wars of the Roses would be written. Henry's next move was equally cunning. On the 18th of January, 1486, Henry VII married Elizabeth of York, daughter of Edward IV. Henry would present his match as the start of a glorious new chapter in the nation's history. Henry realized that picking the right wife was important, but that telling the right story about the marriage was even more so. The story that he wanted to tell was that this was one of the most important marriages in history. Here he was, a Lancastrian, marrying Elizabeth, a Yorkist. They were going to heal the nation. They'd once been bitter rivals, but now they were loving bedfellows. But his cunning storytelling had another advantage too. It glossed over the very inconvenient fact that an awful lot of people thought that he had no right to the throne at all. Henry hoped that his marriage to Elizabeth would be seen as a fresh start. It would also divert attention away from his less than royal lineage. This is a genealogical role showing the kings of England going right back into the mists of time. It goes back as far as Brutus, the mythical king a thousand years before the Romans. You can't even see Brutus because he's still rolled up. We couldn't fit the whole thing onto the table. And as you come down this end towards me, you move forwards into the period of the Wars of the Roses. These circles contain pictures of all the different kings, most of them called Edward. This one's called Rex Ted, which pleases me. As we get down here, we have some Henrys, Henry VI, here's another Edward, here's Richard III, and then the main red line peters out. Where is the next king, Henry VII? Well, he's been squished in at the side as the husband of Elizabeth of York. So where's he popped up from? This black line tells us 
It goes back to Henry's grandmother, Catherine, who was a proper Queen of England, but her second husband, Henry's grandfather, was this chap, Owen Tudor, a servitor in camera. That means a chamber servant, or in other words, a bit of rough. This family tree reveals Henry's dirty secret. The fact that his claim to the throne was decidedly dodgy. It won't surprise you to learn that the scroll belonged to a family who didn't like Henry, the Della Poles. They were plotting against him. The document also explains why he had to marry Elizabeth. She really was royal. She was the daughter of a king, whereas Henry himself was just the grandson of a servant. But this isn't the tale that Henry would tell us if he were here. He didn't present his marriage as a matter of political expediency. He described it as an extraordinary act of reconciliation. 